Several years ago, the Pac-12 tried to poach the Big 12 of several of their major Texas schools to create a 16-team super conference. This obviously fell through at the time, but in the coming years, talk of conference realignment will begin to heat up once again. However, this time around, what if the Big 12 plays a reverse card and tries a cross maneuver on the Pac-12, flipping their original plan on themselves? Welcome to College Football Media, You're a Good Sport. Here we talk about teams, trends, and traditions to logos, history, and predictions. If that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing for in-depth college football content. Will the Big 12 poach the Pac-12. This is kind of a part three or a part two to these two other videos that I've made on this channel. If you're watching this video, I assume you've seen those other two videos, but if not, I recommend you watch them first. You don't have to, but it will at least give you some more context for this video, if nothing else. And so I will leave links to both of them in the description down below. For everyone staying around, you could consider this scenario number two from the conference realignment video and a follow-up to what would happen if indeed the Pac-12 does die. Also, this is again not what I want to happen, but rather a playthrough prediction of how it would work if the Big 12 does poach the Pac-12. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on with it. What is the first domino to fall to set off this chain reaction? Let me set the scene. It's somewhere between 2022 and 2025. The Big Ten's TV contract deal is the first one to come to an end. Therefore, they are the first ones seeking new teams to add to the conference before renegotiating their TV deal. The Big Ten goes to Kansas, and they ask the president and AD if they would be interested in joining the Big Ten. Kansas replies, let me think about it. They promptly inform the Big 12 that they could leave for the Big Ten. But if the Big 12 provides good reason for Kansas to stay, they would prefer to do that. The Big 12 thanks Kansas for the information and immediately begins the process of expansion. They hope to retain Kansas, strengthen the conference, and prevent any other teams from wanting or needing to leave the Big 12. Over on the West Coast, the Pac-12 has become restless and unhappy. They have fallen sorely behind the other four power conferences. They simply can't make enough money to keep up, and USC is particularly annoyed with the conference. And so, in the offices at USC, in walks none other than the commissioner of the Big 12. The Big 12 knows what happened the last time that they attempted to expand. They looked at several options from the group of five schools. Houston, Boise State, Memphis, Cincinnati, UCF, USF, basically all the American schools plus BYU and Boise State. However, that did not work out well and the Big 12 opted to stay at 10 teams rather than add a G5 school. That says that the Big 12 is looking for big brands, and G5 schools for the Big 12 at the time was not enough of an upside for the Big 12 to expand and split the money and revenue that they already have amongst two, at least two other schools. So this time around, the Big 12 is looking for big, big schools. They want big brands with big money that will attract more fans and create better football within the conference. So they look to the West at a struggling Pac-12 with some very high-profile teams. The commissioner sits down and talks with the president of USC and the athletic director. He understands just how frustrated some of the teams are in the Pac-12 at this point. And so the commissioner sells opportunity. He sells upside. He sells revenue, and he sells TV. In the Big 12, you get more eyeballs. In the Big 12, you will get more money. And with you, you will improve our football, and therefore our TV deal will become even more valuable. It is a win-win for you and for us. 
And that's the pitch that the commissioner would give. USC is so fed up with the Pac-12 not being able to keep up and provide good opportunities for TV and eyeballs to see them and also money in their pocket. The Big 12 is offering exactly that and their statistics back up what is being pitched to you as USC. The president says to the commissioner of the Big 12, I like what you're saying and I do see a lot of upside in us joining your conference in the Big 12. However, one of the biggest holdups that I see is travel. That we as USC, especially if we are the only one to join the Big 12, we would have a lot of trouble traveling to your schools in Texas, Iowa, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And West Virginia, I think, would be a little too far. So something needs to give. The commissioner understands that, and they continue to go back and forth for a little while, understanding what each side needs in order for the deal to come through. Effectively, the commissioner leaves that meeting with the understanding that USC will join the Big 12 if West Virginia leaves. So the commissioner of the Big 12 has a meeting with the presidents of at least nine members. Those nine presidents and possibly nine ADs all agree with one another that West Virginia has to go. And so they present to the president and athletic director of West Virginia. They tell them that you effectively can either leave the conference of your own accord with your dignity intact and all peaceful negotiations and relations between the two. Or if West Virginia, you refuse to leave this conference from your own accord, then we will hold a mandatory vote and all nine of us will promptly vote you out at a consensus and you will be kicked out. West Virginia, probably wanting to keep their dignity intact, decides to leave the conference of their own accord and they look elsewhere. The Big 12 turns their head back to the West and USC is ready and waiting for them. Knowing that USC will join the conference, they have options. They can either take two more schools and get to 12, or they could take four more schools and get to 14. And I would think that that's one possibility that they would do. So let's play out that scenario of adding four more teams to it with the addition of USC. The first schools that they look at obviously are Arizona and Arizona State. Arizona State by this point in the mid 2020 decade would have a pretty solid football program under Herm Edwards. And Arizona obviously has a good basketball program. Where else do they look? Might as well stay in Los Angeles for USC to have themselves a good little buddy in UCLA. They negotiate with each other and are informed of other members that are likely to join the Big 12, and it's a pretty easy decision for all of them. USC, UCLA, Arizona, and Arizona State all are looking to join the Big 12, but you need one more member to get to 14, which puts yourselves on par with the Big 10, SEC, and ACC. That one member would be a toss-up between Colorado and Utah. And literally, I think this could go 50-50, one side or the other, take your pick. Colorado, you get tradition, you get past, you get rivalries back. But Utah might have the better upside. That's partially because I think Utah has a lot more fans coming to the stands. Colorado is within a state that contains an NFL team, the Denver Broncos. So a lot of the football fans really are fine with just the Broncos on Sundays. And there is a growing fan base for Colorado State. Utah, on the other hand, has a lot of fans. And that state, there is no professional football team. And BYU, frankly, for a while now, has been on the decline. So Utah just continues to grow, grow, and grow. So I think the upside in terms of future is better at Utah, whereas you get the tradition at Colorado. So it is 50-50, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to say that they choose Utah. Again, conference realignment is crazy, and this is not what I want to happen. And frankly, I don't think the commissioner and presidents in a conference think that way either, even if it is a beautiful rivalry that you could renew. So the Big 12 
poaches five teams from the Pac-12. They get to 14. And this would be probably assuming that the Big Ten, SEC, ACC all remain at their 14 members as well. It leaves the Pac-12 with seven teams. Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Oregon State, Stanford, Cal, and Colorado. Seven members is not quite cutting it, and they need to add a minimum of three. And frankly, I think there's only three good candidates out there. Boise State, San Diego State, and Colorado State. You at least get San Diego back, which is somewhat close to Los Angeles, with obviously you're losing with USC. Boise State has wanted to be in this conference, or at least from fans, wanted Boise State to be in this conference for years. And Colorado State gives you a rival for Colorado that they're losing in Utah. And frankly, they are on the up and coming with a good fan base. That brings the Pac-12 back to the Pac-10 but they might be able to survive in this scenario. But frankly, I don't think this is the most likely scenario. So scenario number two would be that the Big 12, instead of taking five teams, they want to get to that coveted 16-team super conference, and they take more teams, two more in fact, to get to 16. See, we all expect the Big 10, SEC, ACC to go to 16 teams within this next cycle of conference realignment. The Big 12 would need to keep up. So in order to get 16, I think the, those other five stay consistent and they do negotiate and get all five of those teams that I just mentioned. The other two you also get from the Pac-12. And it has to be the biggest brands, the biggest money makers. And out of the teams left in the Pac-12, that would be Oregon and Washington. Geographically, this is a push, especially for Washington. But I think fan base and money-wise, they are national brands. Oregon definitely is a national brand and would bring revenue for the Big 12 up a significant amount. Washington, on the other hand, while not as big of a brand as Oregon, is still a very big brand and could continue to grow within these next five years. A big fan base, just think of Seattle with the Seahawks and losing the Supersonics. There are a lot of good fans in Washington that make money and watch the television to see their team play. So I think it only makes sense for Oregon and Washington to come along and join the 16-team Big 12. Now this could happen in two steps. They could take those five teams that I mentioned earlier at once and then maybe a couple years down the road take Oregon and Washington and push it to 16. Or it could happen all at once where they take all seven of those teams at the same time while kicking out West Virginia. Honestly, this could be a Goliath of a conference. Texas, Oklahoma, even Oklahoma State, Baylor, those teams that were already good in the Big 12, and you add USC, Arizona State, Oregon in football, in Washington, and even Arizona and UCLA in basketball joining Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Those numbers finally line up with the competitiveness in the Big 10 and the SEC. Of course, they could look at rebranding the conference and finding a new name and logo, but they might do what the Big Ten does and what the Big 12 already has done and calling it a name brand, I suppose, and just keeping the name the Big 12. But for a fun, quick scenario number three, what if the Big Ten does still get Kansas? Let's say the Big Ten takes Kansas from the Big 12 and Missouri out of the SEC. How does that affect the scenario? It's really easy and frankly, I think, makes a little more sense. All you have to do is then you can add that Colorado team. You have eight teams from the West and eight teams from the East. You get Colorado back and everybody's happy. Well, except for losing Kansas basketball. But that is at least three scenarios for how it could play out if the Pac-12 does indeed die and how the Big 12 could poach that conference. Of course, it, leaves, it does leave some question marks, including Stanford and Cal Berkeley, and what happens to those schools. I think Oregon State and Washington State join the Mountain West. 
And of course, Colorado is kind of a question mark if they don't get picked up. It's also interesting for what the Big Ten would do. Would they stretch as far west as Colorado? They are an AAU school. A lot of question marks, but for this video, we were just talking about Big 12, Pac-12. So let me know what you think and which conference realignment uh, works out the best um, in your eyes or a different one. Let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. If you watched this whole video, thank you, thank you so much, especially these conference realignment series. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. So if you enjoyed it, hit the like button down below. That really helps me out. And if you loved it, consider subscribing for more in-depth college football content. So thank you again for watching. This is College Football Media. Until next time, be goody now.